first of all, what is shift left testing? As its name suggests, the definition is pretty simple. You don't have to think through uh, the definition after looking at the term. It's very simple. It's like in your software development lifecycle, you should be testing earlier and you should be testing often, which will give you multiple benefits, which include early defect detection, better product quality, cost saving, smaller development cycles, um, ownership, um, which relies with the whole team. Uh, and most important point, as per my uh, opinion, is little to no, no chance of uh, requirement changes as the last moment. So, I mean, this definition is not something which I have coined. This was coined long back by Larry Smith. At least this is what provided uh, at the wiki page. And uh, the context of uh, this particular topic is available on multiple websites, multiple resources. And in my uh, one of the last slides, I have uh, collected some of the links for you to refer. OK, let's go next. So why shift left testing needed? And before we go there, let's try and understand the problem statement not in general, not by definition, but based on one of my real-time experience. So although I had this idea, and many of you would be having this idea, this term of shift left testing has been uh, known to many leaders since a long time, maybe by different name, but people have started realizing it's important as in when they actually met the problem. That's what happened to me as well. So. Sometime back in one of my previous organizations, when I joined uh, that organization, I got into a um, challenge where I was asked to lead a team which had a situation which had 100 plus defects open at uh, per day kind of situation. And it was in that state for different reasons. All the def development team was trying to fix the defects, but they were coming back um, from QA, not not like they were always getting reopened, but QA teams were finding more defects. It was a team of 10 plus uh, developers, five plus QAs, TPM, PM, and a development manager. So I went into that project. I tried to look into that problem and then try to see why is this a problem? So if you try to look at it, you will easily see that number of defects uh, are not reducing per day. And because number of defects were not reducing, team's confidence was going low. Management was losing confidence. People started blaming each other. And it's not a, between the teams like Dev versus QA. It was between Dev and Dev, QA and QA. It's a lot of challenges. Because it was such a mess that people could not commit to a specific date of release. And the date which was committed earlier had been shifted thrice when I joined the uh, particular project. And the defect log was so dynamic and so huge that triaging was lo not looking good. People are trying hard. I'm not saying anyone was not giving their 100%, but it was a situation in the project where people just go into that loop daily coming in, looking at the defects, fixing them, new defects getting reopened. And this is like a cycle where people don't even realize that they have to come out of it tomorrow or day after tomorrow. They just keep on doing it normally. So where was the problem? If you look at the situation, you will clearly see the lack of testing or lack of involvement of Q at the early stage. And by early stage, I mean, I'm not asking that early stage as early as uh, the requirement level, but at an early stage where someone is fixing a problem and the other one is um, not even aware of what the fix is. So how, one, how can anyone uh, test it? And if QA is involved later, they might identify a lot of problems based on their scenarios or data, and that becomes a problem. Obviously, people are focusing on dates of delivering the solution earlier. So they were not quality focused at that time. 
there was a lack of automation. I mean, being in industry for so long, I have seen, and probably most of you have already seen, that when the pressure of date comes, we take automation out. We try to take automation out of the picture uh, by making a mistake. We don't want to invest in automation. So yeah, there was lack of automation because people were thinking, yeah, I'll quickly test it and just move along. That was not happening, right? And because it was, I mean, there was no automation, there was no, no quality uh, focus. So there were inaccuracy in the estimation. And because dates were getting delayed, so product was thinking, mm, if we are trying to delay it by a month, why don't we include two more new requirements? Why don't we develop around two more new requirements and try to you know, uh, deliver it in a month? So now development team would be divided into two teams internally. One would be fixing the existing issues. One would be thinking about the solution of the new requirements, more complexity. Um, now, how did we solve this problem as a team? So it starts at a very basic level. First of all, you have to understand the problem of the team. You have to sit together try to jot down the current scenario, try to see what are your milestones where you want to go, try to identify the steps to reach there. And most importantly, try to have that mindset of moving forward, try to break this monotony of developing daily and identifying issues daily and just going this cycle and coming out of it. I know everyone wants to come out of it, but when you are in this situation, you don't know the right way of moving out. So we started thinking about it and we identified that let's sit for two days um, in a cafeteria, not in a conference room. We, we identified that if we sit in a non-formal, uh, informal env environment, then probably we'll be able to interact more. People will be able to talk to each other freely. It was more like a um, lecture than any other thing. Where people were discussing problems. They were pretty open. They didn't have to uh, you know, do things in a particular manner. So that's when camaraderie started building. And it also allowed us to think that we should not be taking up new requirements. We were able to convince PM that, okay, we, we are going to focus on this problem. So we will not take on new requirement. As, as a team, we started coming closer. So we started introducing things like um, applying unit testing and buddy testing at the start which started I did a problem identification at an early stage and taking responsibility as a team. If someone had fixed a problem and the problem was not completely fixed and introduced new things, no one would go to a, that developer and ask, uh, why did you do that? But team, the whole team would take a responsibility that we should have caught this earlier. And then most importantly, we started celebrating smaller victories. The first one, the first instance of that was uh, day one, we actually fixed 30 defects and only five came back as the new defects. So numbers started reducing. And later on, as the day progressed, as the month progressed, we were able to deliver the project. Now, if you look at this whole problem statement, where does shift left testing come into the picture? And the answer is simple. Like our definition states that we should test early and test often. Please forgive me for my drawing. I tried to draw uh, the concept of a shift left or testing at every stage using Xkelly draw. And I ended up drawing handbags for shopping. So don't treat that as a shopping scenario. But um, it is just trying to tell you that we have to test at different stages. We should test uh, at requirement gathering stage, at design stage, at development stage, and obviously at deployment stage. That's the simplest of rules for a shift left testing. 